Welcome back to Online Permit Search. My name is Toby with Homestar Inspections. When researching building permits for a property located in unincorporated Palm Beach County, it's first best to verify that the municipality is indeed unincorporated. You do this by going to their property appraisers website for Palm Beach County. That's located at pbcgov.org forward slash PAPA. In the center here, you want to type in your address. My example is going to be 17101 77th Lane North in Loxahatchee. Click search. And on the property detail page, you're going to get a lot of information, uh, including year built and, and square footage and everything. It's going to be an aerial view of the property. And then location address. Of course, you always want to verify the location address is correct. Followed by the municipality. This property is indeed located in unincorporated Palm Beach County, which is also uh, identified by the fact that the parcel control number begins with zero, zero. So moving forward, any parcel control number beginning with zero, zero in Palm Beach County is gonna be unincorporated Palm Beach County. I then like to highlight the rest of this parcel control number, right click and copy. It just helps navigate the county website a little bit easier. With that information, you go to our website, which is located at homestarinspectionsfl.com, where you can schedule now or permit search. Click on permit search. And these are all of our counties alphabetized. Scroll down to Palm Beach County and click. All the cities are gonna be alphabetized, but we put unincorporated Palm Beach County up top. And it also reminds you that the parcel ID or parcel control number is going to begin with 00. zero. One last reminder, this website typically likes Internet Explorer. So if you use a different web browser, such as Firefox, it might not be compatible. Uh, so make sure you're using Internet Explorer and then click here. And this brings you to their planning, zoning and building homepage. There's a building tab up here. When you hover over it with the mouse, four options pop up, you want to select build uh, permits and inspections. And then on the permits and inspections page, there's uh, seven tabs. Uh, I like to use address or parcel control number at the end here. Uh, address is pretty straightforward, street name, number, street name, suffix. Parcel control number, we already copied it from the pop-up page. So I'm going to right click and paste and click search. This website likes to populate the first 10 on file permits at a time. You can select to see 25 at a time. However, this has a total of 30 records. So even with 25 selected, you're still looking at two pages of toggle in between. Instead, what I like to do is just click on show all right here. And this is the way you have all of the permits that are available online in one shot. The three columns I pay attention to are the permit number, which is identified by a letter identifying the type of permit, B for building, and then followed by the year 2022, M for mechanical 2021, E for electrical 2021, and P for plumbing 2011, and so forth. And you can see these are all hyperlinks, which we'll click on one in a second. The next column I pay, pay attention to is the permit description. This will give a little more detail on the type of permit. As you can see, a building permit can either be an alteration, a site plan review, uh, an addition, or even a roofing permit. And then the third column I typically only look at for purchase transactions is the status of the permit. Uh, title companies would like to see that all permits are closed out. If there's an open or expire permit, that could indicate a lien on the property. Uh, so as a free service, we do this with all of our inspections. We will do a quick, quick review. If it's available online, we'll see if there's any open or expired permits. That way you can jump on it right away. And looking at these permits here, you can see the first one says complete. The second one says approved. Approved could mean that there's an open permit. So digging into a little bit more, looking over to the permit numbers over here, you'll see that the first and second row, the permit numbers are identical. That means that this top permit, which says complete, is actually that permit, uh, the same permit as below. And as long as, as long as one of them says complete, the permit should be closed out. So scrolling down, you'll see there's two more that say approved. However, the one above that that says closed out is also the same permit. So this permit should be closed out as well. Uh, this lets you know that one permit can occupy more than one row. 
uh, the top one occupies two, this one occupies three, and so forth. Another use of this website is if you're making an offer on a property and you want to see when the last time a roof permit was pulled for this property, there are, there are average life expectancies for each type of roofing system. If we click on the permit description, it'll alphabetize all the sub permit categories. And if you scroll down to roofing and you highlight and you go all the way to the permit numbers, you'll see there's a building roofing permit from 2002, 2011, and 2014. This would suggest that all three permits are different. The first and oldest permit is from 2002. If you look at the permit just below that, it's nearly identical in permit number, just one digit off. And that was for the original building permit for the single family dwelling. That would suggest that this permit from 2002 is the original roofing permit for this property. So what we wanna do now is determine if the 2011 and 2014 permits uh, signify a re-roof of that main structure. So clicking on the 2011 permit, we'll see that the information on, at the top right here says there's an accessory dwelling permit. If we go back to the PAPA website and go to the aerial view, you'll see there are three separate buildings on this property. That would indicate that this permit is for one of those other additions. Of course, you always want to run this by the seller to make sure that it wasn't also inclusive of the main house. But from this information right here, it does not appear to be. Navigating backwards, you want to use the go back button here. It just helps keep the information, the parcel ID number intact right there. So you can just click search, show all, permit description, and you're right back to the same information. Going to the third and final permit here from 2014, we see at the top in the permit description that it's for an addition garage slash porch. Uh, further description is detached garage. So both of these extra roofing permits do not indicate that the main house was re-roofed. Again, verify this with the seller. But when you're making an offer, you want to know if the prop if the roof is going to have any viable life expectancy, especially for insurance purposes. So show all and permit description is going to give us right back to the information. If we assume that this as this roof is an asphalt shingle, asphalt shingle roofs in Florida in this area can have anywhere from a 15 to 20 year life expectancy on average. You always need to do an on site review. That is just an industry average. Uh, if indeed it's an asphalt shingle or architectural, that would make it around 20 years of the average life. And if the main house was original from 2002, this roof system would be uh, at the end of its average life expectancy. So you want to make sure that you know this going into it. That way you can adjust your offer accordingly. If you have any questions or need help navigating these websites, you can always reach out to us through our website or email me directly at toby at homestarinspectionsfl.com. Take care.